back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take a break from our normal gaming shenanigans to talk about the other stuff going on in the Linux community. This week, before we get started, I want everyone to know if you're watching the home video version, we're having some bandwidth issues with Space Portugal, so Pedro might get a little 8-bit on us. But that aside, coming up, Dell has made tens of millions of dollars on Linux laptops. Dude... And Vivaldi CEO bashes Microsoft for, well, basically being Microsoft. Microsoft, speaking of, uh, opens the sauce to the HLSL Clang compiler. But they were unnecessarily careful with their wording, and Ubuntu creates a tutorial platform. Why? I don't know. Wine sees a new major release, which manages to be both underwhelming and very exciting at the same time. Uh, Asus wants to compete with the Raspberry Pi, and they got some quality hardware to go with that. Okay, let's get right into this, because new DirectX it, it, shader is out, and that totally means that uh, DirectX 12 is coming to Linux, right, Pedro? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, okay. I wait with bated breath. No, actually, I don't really care. This is uh, Microsoft's HLSL compiler. And they were, in the article themselves, they say it's now available as open source. Good. And then you start reading the article, and they word it very, very carefully. It's, they don't say it's open anywhere else on the article. They say it's public. They don't say it's open. They say it's available. But as Strider um, will let you know, they did actually open the source as far as we're concerned, considering the license that's all very well and good. It will probably see some matter of Linux implementation or at least an attempt to be implemented under Linux. Remains to be seen how that will work with the way that Vulkan handles shaders and if you could use Microsoft's code to, say, improve the spurvy Vulkan um, shader rendering. Probably won't be the case because, let's face it, Vulkan was meant for low level, low overhead, everything else. And it's been doing that far better, at least according to some of the uh, benchmarks we've seen over on Windows land, that uh, Vulkan performs much better than DX12. So yeah, I'm definitely like looking at it because, you know, HLSL, you know, it's, the, it's the shader language. I mean, it's been part of the DirectX API since like DirectX 9. That's what they're opening up. Strider, maybe you can clarify this. And Clang, I mean, Clang's been open source since like 2007. So what's our big news here? Yeah, I mean, they're, they've been really careful in their blog post. But if you look at the GitHub um, repo, it's under a standard MIT license. So it fully qualifies as open source, okay. really. I mean, it mm -hmm. doesn't get any much more like open source than that. Um, but I can already see people like jumping in and say, oh, this will be great for wine and this will be great for Vulcan. I don't know. I mean, all these crazy ideas. Uh, I personally don't think, don't believe it will. I think this will be useful for Windows game developers and Windows game developers only. Uh, as far as like other Linux related projects go, I don't think it, this will have any impacts. Okay. But anyway, I mean, it's a right, it's a step in the right direction. So, I'm not going to complain. So, turns out a lot of dudes did end up getting Dell's. Uh, that Duke boy, <laughs> um, he definitely had a chat with the um, senior architect, the CTO, um, about what's going on. You know, he's like, oh, so how are how those um, Dell laptops? There's a link to um, the Lunduke Hour. It'll be mm -hmm. in our show notes along with everything else. And, well, basically, I was like, yeah, man, well, we've definitely shipped a lot of these out of an initial investment of, I believe it was $40,000. Mm -hmm. And over the past four years, the, like the return on that's been the very vague tens of millions of dollars. And I definitely think Dell has come a long way from trying to find that moon website, that one page where you could order a laptop with like free DOS on it. And they hid that. <laughs> very well now if you look at the uh, developer editions on the dell website right now you will see the ubuntu xps 13 and uh, 15 they have a 15 version too yeah mm -hmm. yeah and they, they were saying that they, they had no plans to support any other distributions other than ubuntu 
And I think that's a smart move because they, they don't lose focus and like provide support for like a bunch of distributions. Uh, if it works with Ubuntu, it will probably work just fine with pretty much anything. So it's up to the community if they want to to provide like extra support to to give that. Uh, I think it's also a smart move to just make this available online because I mean the Linux users, if they want a Linux laptop, they're smart enough to order online. But some other people who are not Linux users, I mean. Some of them don't even have a clue what an operating system is, so might as well not surprise them with uh, a Linux laptop. Well, that's also mm -hmm. true, and I was kind of disheartened by that because you know they had plans apparently at some point to sell Linux laptops in a brick and mortar store, which I think would have been handy. They said, "Nope, nope, nope, that dream's long since gone. Maybe it'll come back, but it would be nice to have a place to like return, maybe swap out something that you bought without dealing with the mail exchange." I guess we should also point out. Uh, System76 also sells the Ubuntu laptops. You might want to check them out as an option. Tote's not a sponsor, trust us. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, there's also Entroware. There's also Purism. But there's debate, some debate over that. There's a few. But up next, ooh, Strider. Uh, What's yeah, this about? So this is like some kind of hack to let you uh, play some pulse audio streams uh, between multiple rooms. So... I wouldn't say this is something very reliable. It's it's on a blog that's called almostworking.com. And even the author says, eh, I mean, it kind of works. But, I mean, it seems pretty complete. I mean, there there's been some work putting in this project. It does require open to WRT uh, to make this work. So it might put off some people. And it's, I mean, it seems like a work in progress. It, it doesn't seem like a pretty complete solution. So if you want to, to have a look at it, uh, start hacking on this, I mean, good. If you want like a, something really neat and packaged up, this is not what you would be looking for. Yeah, well, if you're looking at it, why would I want to do this? It's kind of like my Sonos system. This is very much in the vein of a homebrew Sonos. One thing that Sonos does wicked well is everything sync? There's not that micro half millisecond out where it causes that weird reverb. And they're trying to reimplement that with a completely open source solution. Really, all you need is like 40 watt stinky caches to buy the router. And Strider is, well, you gotta install the web WRT. Or what is it? Yeah, open WRT now. Yeah. And um, I, I really don't think the type of people that are gonna start playing around with a solution like this are gonna go, oh no, that's a stopping point for me. I, I just don't see that. Well, happening. you need to have the router. That's the start. That's what I'm saying. I mean, 40 watt sneaky yeah. cash and pick that up. And if you're looking to start this up, chances are you're already looking at the compatibility list on openwrt.org.com. I can't remember the, the exact file, uh, the exact uh, domain yeah, Pedro, name. you need to go to Strider's blog, works for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is actually, it's kind of awesome. And I was listening to Strider's description of what this was trying to play it down it's something that barely works it's something that's kind of a work in progress you mean like the entirety of pulse audio as it stands no pulse audio is very solid at this point i mean it was <laughs> it was a work in progress and it was like something kind of working back in like five years ago or six I years ago. You, you, yeah, no, i didn't know you solid. became a stand-up comedian look at you man i mean, <laughs> I mean that, did you did you have some also do issues <laughs> lately? I haven't. <laughs> okay. uh, just try to change frequencies. Just seriously, try going from uh, 44,100 to like 48,000. Didn't tell me how that works. Listen, that. listen we, we, we all know Strider's the eternal optimist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is. He definitely is. Because uh, on January 21st, well, uh, in my case, it was the 22nd, there was a, a little discussion about the exact uh, time that it was posted because I completely misread it and I thought he had posted it the day before, but that's beside the point. Um, Strider posted on Google Plus that he, in his eternal optimism uh, and being tired of all those distros and spins that have few niggling issues and basically most of them just devolve into an SH file that they could easily share and just 
share that with the community and hey now you have a whole new Disra installed not really but with his unwavering idealism he decided to try and fix the Linux desktop paradigm as it were and this covers a very 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 large subset of problems uh, but Strider is being methodical and he's trying to get people to help him, namely uh, Ike Doherty uh, from Solus, uh, Martin Wimpress from Ubuntu Mate, uh, Danielle Ferre from Elementary and a few other people. Uh, I don't know about this last one, but at least Martin and um, Ike have already said, yep, we're on board, get something uh, concrete up and running. And we'll help you. And that very same something concrete is the very first issue on the shellac. Is that correct pronunciation? Yeah, that's shellac, yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's the TV mode switcher. And there there are a few um, issues that Strider brings up there that need to be fixed. But I think, and it's I think it's issue number three. Yes. TV should, uh, uh, when the display is activated, if you're using a TV as a display, its position should be remembered, which isn't the case now. That is the very first thing that needs to be fixed before you even do anything else. <laughs> what is this yeah, project? I'm, Tell I'm me about sure. it. Why, why am I interested in it? And do so, it in like three minutes. Uh, I mean, I think some people misunderstood what I was going for with this because I'm not going to fix everyone's issues. I'm going to fix my issues first. <laughs> and if people want to jump in and submit theirs, then they have a platform to work together and and fix stuff. But I'm not going to go. I mean, I don't have it. I barely have enough time to fix my issues. So, no, I'm not going to fix all the desktop. I want to provide a platform where it's possible to do so, but I'm not going to do so myself because, I, I mean, I have other things to do. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's uh, commonly, I mean, I, I cannot expect this. When I say something, it takes time for people to get where I'm going, going for. Um, that said, yeah, I mean, it's going to be more like something where uh, the project approves some software. Like, uh, yeah, this this is the good stuff we want to work with on Linux, and this is some quality stuff you can install on your desktop. And all the instead of making a distribution, you will have all this list of approved uh, software that you can install with no problems. So uh, you're trying to create an abstract version of Lutris for the entirety of niggling issues in desktop Linux. That's kind of like the point. Yeah, it would be it's it's Lutris for the desktop. Again, it's completely unwavering optimism. I love you, Stray. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is horrifying, but not as horrifying as the beautiful people helping us make this show. Ah, yes. Uh, of which Strider is one such people, yes. Uh, but if you want to contribute and help us get more shows out there and in your face, you can do it by going to linuxgamecast.com forward slash support dash the just, uh, just click, mm, click dash chosen. On, hyperlinks. Yes, there's a, a button there that says support chosen. You can just do that. There are PayPal donato buttons. If you can't really afford a recurring donation, just want to donate the once. You could do that. Um, there are some Amazon affiliate links. So if you're buying something on Amazon, you could just hit that button, do your purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And we get a teeny tiny bit off the top. So that's awesome. But if you want to go to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, that's where the magic's been happening. 95 uh, beautiful like. party people <laughs> helping us out. 161 yeah. wet stinky caches per Saturday night train wreck. That's right. This is a two for one type of deal. All we're asking for is four quarters a week. And that's two shows. Plus all the extra bonus stuff that we like to throw in every week. Indeed. And since we're coming up on our, uh, our newest uh, eh, idea of giving ourselves say a bit of a challenge to prototype new shows to get through entire games live on stream have a recurring stream date an hour or two every monday and thursday or friday maybe who knows um we will be live at those hours and we'll be 
maybe prototyping a new show. terrifying just... ideas like call-in shows <laughs> and um new gaming streams and jordan just like sent a chill down my spine organ he's like let's rewatch all of stargate and do a podcast <laughs> uh yeah you could look forward to that if we hit that 175 dollar week goal that would be awesome i know we can do it we're like 14 dollars away five mm -hmm. patreons away from 100 that's gonna be a beautiful magic number so if you got the time you get a little extra coin and you like what we do let us know and we'll get back oh yeah one more thing if you like our saturday um mishaps and craziness there's an extra hour of that just for <laughs> patreons it's an rss feed you can put into your mp3 player whatnots on your itunes even if you want to use that and listen to our pre-pre-show that is never aired live it's beautiful but tutorials tutorials hey have you ever got yourself wondering you know i like this linux thing but i wish there were there was another place uh, that had even less tutorials than every other place that already exists. Well, I think an article was listening because tutorials.ubuntu.com goes live. Yep. This news comes from the Insights blog over at ubuntu.com. And they say, yep, it's the, um, it's the code labs, as it were. Uh, you can have all of the tutorials in one place. Right now, If you, you can actually install those tutorials. Uh, directly by installing a snap package. Wow, they're really pushing that one. Uh, <laughs> and they, uh, they they actually had a description here. Let's see. Here, here we go. What are Ubuntu tutorials? Ubuntu tutorials are a topic specific are topic specific walkthroughs. That's an extra a there, giving you a very practical experience on a particular domain. They are just like learning from pair programming, except you can do it on your own. Ben. I saw that, and <laughs> I, I guess this was just like the week to have shivers sent down my spine organ. It was like pair programming. I remember that nightmare fuel from university. No. Um, you, you had a very apt description of exactly what that's like, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's you secretly resent your pair. You fantasize about driving that smug superiority there they've been giving you. You know, driving it right out of their skull with a certain body part. Hmm. But, but they do make a mention that you can use the tutorials offline thanks to the wicked, amazing Snap technology, Strider. But uh, <laughs> speaking of Snap, I, I think there's a, like a laser snap, beam sir. focus to all these tutorials. Yes, there is one clear focus here. I mean, it says it's Ubuntu tutorials. It's tutorials for Ubuntu. But right now, there's only tutorials for Snap packages. Mm. It's yeah. either Snap, Snapcraft... Uh, I was expecting like something a bit more broad, like I don't know something like QML, like uh, sysadmin stuff, uh, LXC, uh, you know something a bit more generic, and maybe those will come over time. But right now, if you go to the websites, there's only Snap-related stuff, so it shows yeah. where the focus from Canonical is. I mean, it's. They're currently and very, very focused on snaps. In the age of the art wiki, this isn't just redundant, it's obsolete. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Hammer time. It's time to do the right thing, Microsoft. That's right, co-founder CEO of Vivaldi is a little upset at Microsoft for being Microsoft. Every time, because, well, as he writes, and there's a little bit of, every time the Windows 10 upgrades, it changes the default browser to Edge. Why, question mark? Because Edge is actually that bad, and it's Microsoft, again, being Microsoft. Not a lot to complain about. He's like, one of my elderly friends couldn't figure out how to reset on the Windows to make, um, I'm guessing, Vivaldi or Chrome or Firefox or basically anything which is better mm -hmm. than Edge back to the default browser. Now, I remember billions of years ago in the future's past, even on Linux, we had a little bit of this problem between Chrome and Firefox going at each other. Every time you would open it, everyone was like, I'm not your default browser. And they finally put this. It still happens. <laughs> okay. But for the most part, they've learned how to coexist. Um, yeah, kind of an interesting story. But I mean, what do you expect, Strider? I mean, you're running Windows 10, an operating system so bad, they had to give it away for free. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't get it because 
I consider that in the Windows world, it's all about being sneaky. So if they want, if they know that Microsoft is doing this, why don't they do the same thing? Like write a little uh, program that will run in the background, and when they see that the default browser changes, um, <laughs> it will change it back to, to what it's <laughs> supposed to be. And yes, <laughs> no, I mean, isn't isn't Windows all about being sneaky? Did I miss something? It is. I, I, I just wanted to point it out because I, I like Vivaldi. Uh, we're using it right now to display the web zones, and it works. It's a nice piece of kit, and it's got some whiz bang stuff that you really want to disable. But it's like somebody coming out and saying, "Hey, guys, quit doing that. Remember that whole antitrust thing you went through? Let you want to dance that dance mm -hmm. one more time." But it's nothing to whine about. Oh no, it's not. Yeah. So. Wine is a new, like it's Wine 2.0. It will have been waiting for this for like months. Uh, it's a new major release and it's kind of like a great release and underwhelming at the same time. I mean, if you look at their uh, release notes, one of the highlights is Office 2013. And that's just, I mean, it's sad, really. If you would use Wine to run Office, yeah, it's kind of sad. Um, no, you're not going to be but, fair. I'm going to save you that hate mail next week. Some people are in a situation where they're forced to. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the point. If you have, if you use Wine to do that, it's because you're forced to. I, I, I wouldn't explain it any other way. Tell um, me about this release cycle. Yeah, but so it doesn't have that much... Uh, new stuff in this release. I mean, DirectX 11 support is incomplete. Uh, X input support is incomplete. But there's a quite a few neat stuff that's, uh, that has landed in wine staging that still has to make its way to the regular wine. And at this point, the wine staging uh, release for this 2.0 is so much better than the usual, uh, the regular one. I mean, you can run Doom with it. Uh, there have been patches for Uplay, for God Galaxy, for all this kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, I mean, currently, if you want to run something for gaming, you want that wine staging like more than yeah. ever. Okay, well, considering this is not about the wine staging, this is 2.0. A couple of things they've thrown in there, Direct 3D 10 and 11 features have been implemented. They're not feature complete as... Strider said, uh, Wine Direct 3D graphics card database recognizes more graphics cards, so when you check your graphics card, you won't be running an <laughs> RX 480. Right, something like <laughs> that, man. But yeah, you had some questions about this um, 2.0 release. Yeah, because I remember reading a few years back that Wine was waiting for the complete implementation of uh, D3D11 for it to be done and everything was working. For them to release the 2.0, but I guess that's not the case. And Strider, no, why is it? It's not the case because now they've switched to a time re uh, time based release, so they will release one major version every year. So you'll see 3.0 shipping like next January probably, and this will likely have a more complete DirectX implementation. And that's what's really exciting with this release is that all the stuff they've been keeping like aside because they were working on, on the stable release of 2.0, it will land like really soon, like in the 2.1 or 2.2, we'll see a huge amount of patches related to, to uh, DirectX 11 and all that kind of neat stuff and it's going to be very exciting times. Like, it again. will. And as like Rohit points out and Shot Realm, maybe we'll eventually be able to play Witcher 3. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's already making very good progress. I mean, you can start a game. It, it does have uh, major glitches, but um, yeah, Witcher 3 is going to be one of the first DirectX 11 games you will be able to play. Okay, now let's go on to a... Pepsi challenge, you know him, you love him. It's Martin Wimpress from the Mate or Mate project. He heard that this guy Vin Stone might take the Mate well, for a test drive. Basically, I did it, and um, you know I ran that first. Oh, Control Alt T doesn't work on XFCE. That rhymed unintentionally. But what I ended up with 
was something from mate-desktop.org. And I, I, I got some of this beautiful stuff in my face. Because I was going to test it out, the new PPAs on 16.04 LTS. They work. Um, it's like 455 megajoules to download. It has since been uninstalled. I know uh, Martin's already got his popcorn ready. He's like, let's just listen to this rant because you know what's coming. Um, I did manage to add the PPA. It installed. No big issue. After you know, like a wicked quick reboot, I was met with the meat background on my session manager. <laughs> light DM. <laughs> it changed your light DM wallpaper. <laughs> like, ick. Ick. What the hell, man? Oh, sorry. Dang. Um, well, I say ick because, you know, Mate was like one of the four DMs I have. I have like LXDE, the stock Unity, just because I hate myself, um, XFCE, and um, Enlightenment. And um, Mate was the only one that changed that background. And I was like, come on, really? <laughs> Anywho, logged into Mate. And to its credit, it did something very awesome, very rare. It detected all three of my monitors. And I run separate X screens. So that is very rare outside of XFCE kudos to where it's due um however one thing it did do is only display desktop icons on my primary monitor yeah i i could have ignored that but one thing that this doesn't do like xce or enlightenment does is it doesn't give you a menu on the desktop when you right click nope. so you can go to your application so it's like oh oh but to each of my desktops, I was able to add a launcher. So I'm um, on each of the screens. So I could theoretically live with mate on a dare, maybe. And I know, I know this doesn't sound like a glowing endorsement of the project. But considering it's coming from me, an XFCE zealot, it's got a high praise. I don't hate it. it for my particular use case, can't say it. Maybe you want to go out and give the Pepsi challenge You did have yourself. an issue, though. Mm, I'm getting to that. Um... Because I wanted to test the gaming performance before I went screaming back to my comfortable safe space, which is XFCE. I tested Talos, known as the benchmark for Vulcan, which <laughs> really is all, I got like six hours of benchmarking into the game. Using the latest NVIDIA drivers, it was keeping up to snuff, though. I mean, it was like margin of error. It was like three FERPs outside of XFCE until it hard noped my box of business. I mean, it Shadow Warrior hard noped the box. Couldn't SSH into it. I'm not blaming Mate for that, but I've never had that issue before. Just, I had to say that full disclosure and everything. I'd be a putz if I didn't mention that. Neat project, cool. Um, it really reminds me, you know, it's more of a polished, uh, like the Gnome 2 that used to ship with Kombuntu, mm -hmm. and it's been updated. It's very slick, just not not the favorite thing for me. I, if you've seen my desktop, I like fugly. So, uh, oh, what, what oh do you yes, think? you do. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the one thing I've noticed uh, when you install, like, full-on desktop environments, like me or Kitty, uh, they usually don't work as well when added to a system after it's been installed then say if you installed like Ubuntu Mate directly. Because on my case, I installed Ubuntu Mate and then I added this PPA and everything works. I ran the um, the Talos, the benchmark principle uh, a couple of times with both OpenGL and Vulkan didn't have any issues, so I don't know. But um, the big thing here with this new uh, Mate version, is I'm guessing why Ven decided to try it again, is that it makes GTK3 rendering available in Mate for Ubuntu 16.04. Unless you, you know, you want to pull a Strider and use the non-LTS version. Well, I mean, compared to the 14.04 version, which we, I, we, we have screenshots <laughs> that I tried that 14.04, it was just busted. This was a completely perfectly usable desktop. Yes. I, I'm not saying it isn't. I'm saying everyone go try it out. It might be your cup of chainsaw. Strider, you, you're just like a upgrade, right? Yeah, I mean... I wouldn't use this PPA. I would just upgrade to 16.10. If you're going to upgrade, like I said the same thing like last week, if you're going to upgrade something as central as the desktop, why not just uh, upgrade your distribution? And mm -hmm. then, then again, I'm probably sure that if you, you try this, if anyone tries this PPA, they won't run into, into as many issues as you did because you usually create issues just to rant about them, don't you? I don't. I'm just going to let them hang here for a minute. <laughs> just let them suffer. But I can't let them hang too long because we're running against our time limit. So it is time for a slice of delicious pie. 
So let's Indeed. talk about something that's not a Pi. That sounds right. Um, Asus Raspberry Pi Rival can play 4K video. That's right. The Tinkerboard, as it's called, is more powerful than you would expect for the size. It's got some business on it. I mean, for 55 euros, you're basically getting a 1.8 gigahertz ARM Cortex A17, 2 gigs RAM, 4 USB 2.0 ports, gigabit LAN, Bluetooth 4.0, 802, BG and N Wi-Fi antennas, and HDMI 2.0. That's not bad for the price, man. Mm -hmm. Con considering the, the high specs, I mean, it's very good. It's not that, not that expensive. And yeah, I might, might consider but, but getting it. But it has that one really cool feature. Uh, the fact that it has the exact form factor than a Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, yeah, and that's usually I, a good way of doing things. Uh, yes, there yeah, is one use. thing. For that much, you can probably get a secondhand uh, Zotac Pico box, which is x86. And it already comes with a case. No. This ain't. I don't want. I mean, I would rather have a, an ARM CPU and uh, rather than a crappy x86. Hmm. Okay. Well, how about this one? Um, so okay. So that's uh, from from Google. They they are trying to provide the tools to do some machine learning, face recognition, text to speech, uh, all the all that kind of neat stuff that you wouldn't really use a Raspberry Pi to do that to do that with, but they still like provide you the tools to do it. Why you would you use an underpowered uh, machine as a like a, a Raspberry Pi for that? I don't know. Maybe it's integrated in a well, I don't think know. it necessarily has to be a bunch of power. It's just gonna be a front end to do voice recognition and stuff like that. Um it's yeah. kinda neat. Uh it's just like sort of AI stuff, but the kind of people tinkering with Raspies are usually the type that are fiercely protective of their privacy. So I don't know about having an always on type of device. Pedro, thoughts, hints, allegations? Uh well, there's already a pretty big botnet of Raspberry Pis and other Internet of Things. You can already hardware. make an Alexa Raspberry Pi, so yeah, you can. <laughs> and it it's just Google playing into the the same field because Amazon was people had uh, gotten Alexa to run on the Raspberry Pi, so Google is just yeah, let's keep the playing field level, and it makes sense. But it eh, you got your phone, you just shout "Hey Google" across the room, and chances are a phone's gonna light up. I still think this is a neat tool. I think we're going to see a bunch of cool stuff that we can't even imagine coming out of this just because of the low cost of the Pi and just the beautiful, insane people out there that are going to or, just or make Or if you thing. need more power, you could use the, the Asus one. Definitely like could. Or if you wanted to get in touch with us. Indeed. If you want to get in touch with us, you can go to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. It's pretty easy. Fill out the form, make sure to pick LWDW from the little drop box, unless, of course, you want to send some hate mail for that Saturday thing, what we do. But this week, we have teeny tiny bits of hate mail. Just, just a little Order. bit. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Well, Greg uh, kind of chimed in on last week's episode. He was like, hey, man, we got to explain this again because we always get new listeners, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So this is kind of a PSA more than it is, you know, some feedback. But I wanted to mention it for everyone out there listening. So he's like, hey, Google gave this one link that I found from the show. We need links for other topics, please. He's being nice about it. And for that, I, have, I replied, as there, if you hit the show more on YouTube, it'll give you a link to the show notes <laughs> at linuxemcast.com because we're not putting, you know, 30 links in the description for mm -hmm. that. And right, it's, it's all on our web zone. Check that out. But he does mention your intro with three speakers it was confusing, which is odd because we're not speakers. We're, we're carbon-based entities. <laughs> Yeah, talk about confusing. That that's feedback. I mean, it it was confusing as well. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> no, when he said about. we need links for other topics, please. It was like, what the topics we don't talk about? Hey, man, you yeah. never know. <laughs> not, I, I mean, I don't get it. He could be a time mind. traveler. Okay, we were <laughs> talking be. about monitors a few weeks back, and. You know, we were all talking about how we all have multiple monitors. And Spudley wrote back, he's like, what's the point of using multiple monitors? And to that, I will retort, buy your second one and get back to me and tell me how many you end up with in, let's say, three years from that. It'll take you a whole of two weeks to find a use for that second monitor. And it'll take you about a year uh, to start thinking, yeah, I kind of need a third one now. 
I, I'm definitely sitting here with a third one going, I have a legitimate use case. I need a fourth one, Strider. You, you just <laughs> recently picked up a second one. Has, has it changed your uh, life? No, but you don't, you don't really need two, two monitors. I mean, if you, if you have one of those like extra wide ones, uh, like does 30 inch, like does those extra like huge monitors. Oh, no, no, no. I could make an argument that you still need an extra monitor after that because you have a game full screen on that monitor and you need another one with, say, Telegram and a browser window, YouTube video. Okay, then you need a third one. No, never mind. I mean, if it's like Wicked Ultra (laughs) Wide, you could like put the game in the center because it's like, but then you're going to be like, yeah. <laughs> As opposed to like, I just got a monitor over here and I have a monitor up here in the sky. Then I got this giant monitor in front of me. Okay, that's cool. That's the thing. That's why maybe we didn't answer your question, but uh, just just be careful, man. It's like PCP. Once you do it, you're just going to keep going. To close us out, James writes, uh, talking about the new G Plus is an excuse for us to be a little cranky about what was forced upon us last night. Um, he's yep. like, it's stupid, but it's worth noting that Hangouts might be, because we were like, hey, man. They, they removed the Hangouts from inside G+, mm-hmm. but uh, might be losing a little functionality because Google Voice is gaining some fi- finally is gaining some finally after five years. Okay, words, um, which might be a topic for your Wednesday show. Boom, now it is. Short, yeah. quick topic. Uh, that is something to mention. The Google Voice on Android was updated after five years, but like a year and a half, two years ago, they it was superseded with Hangouts and Hangouts Dialer, which everyone's using. And I was like, Voice. That's a name I haven't heard in oh, some time. And I went back and installed it and I was like, voice, let's uninstall that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was weird. I got one Hangouts dialer call and that was Jordan uh, when he was trying to figure out my home address. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it the, the new Google Plus update was unwelcome to say mm-hmm. the least. Uh, it. I've already ran into several bugs. I've reported them. There's now like a big button. It's like, oh, uh, report issues here. Right. Because if you and try this at home, if you open an image in the new Google Plus layout and then you back out of that and you try to use the notifications, they're broken. Mm-hmm. Good times. Works for me. Yeah. I don't, didn't have any issues with this. I mean, um, if, you want, if you want to have Hangouts... Just use the Chrome extension. I've been using that for the past few months, and it works great. Yeah, that, uh, we're very close to a native app. So definitely yeah. want to mention that the Chrome extension. I went yeah. back to using that, and um, oh, it's it's not a downgrade. I mean, it's it's definitely an upgrade from the the Google Plus version. You, you yeah, no, you, you, know. you tell that you to someone. To to That's going to close us out for this week. Thank you for showing up and thank you for supporting the show. If you see a Patreon and shout realm, thank them because they help make this possible. But we'll be back next week. But until then, you can always find me at Vin Stone on the Twitter Nets plus Vin Stone on the G pluses where I'll do my best to get back to you. And I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or on Google plus complaining about the new layout at plus Pedro Mateos. And I am Mathieu Commandant. Please, please don't find me. Or if you really want, you can find me at Strikor on Twitter and Mathieu Com- Plus, Mathieu Commandant on Google Plus. But you probably don't use Google Plus at this point because you now hate it. That's why you use Facebook. <laughs> lean, lean to your left. Lean to your left. Lean to your and left. Stri- also, yes, also on Lutris.net. There's a Patreon for that. Sorry, Jill. I, I apologize. I was trying to get him to show off. Ben that was trying. That you, he yeah. tried. Anyway, bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>